Welcome back to New Day. One of the most downloaded podcasts in the world centers around a fictional southwestern U.S. town. NPR describes Welcome to Night Vale as the news from Lake Wobegon is seen through the eyes of Stephen King. The creepily entertaining show and its cast members are in the midst of a world tour, including a stop right here in Seattle. Jeffrey Cranor, the show's co-creator, joins me now. Welcome. Is it okay if I call it creepy? Uh, I, I, I love it. I think it's <laughs> all sorts of Creepily entertaining. Yeah. Um, where, where did this idea come from? Tell uh, us about Night Vale. It, well, it, it came from uh, my co-writer Joseph Fink and I were theater kids in New York City making theater, and it came from a thought of let's make a podcast. It's cheaper, and we get to write together. Right, and, and you can um, do anything you want. You can do anything you want. And at the time, there wasn't uh, anything that was sort of fitting into the world of like weird fiction. We like telling stories strange jokes and we like horror but we also like silly comedy and we like a little bit of satire so it was kind of a blend of all of these things that we I pieced like together. I feel missing that the twilight zone the dark shadows genre we don't have those things going on. Yeah it was it fits into the we always term it weird town USA as the <laughs> genre and I growing up in the 80s I had things like a uh, uh, Erie, Indiana was a TV show, uh, Northern Exposure, Twin yes. Peaks, uh, The Adventures of Pete and Pete in the 1990s. Like these were shows I grew up on and I think, uh, yeah, I think the Night Vale takes a lot of influence from those. Now, so what do we know about Night Vale? Night vale, where it is, what it's all about? We know it's in the desert. Uh, in the southwest and we know that it is a town where every conspiracy theory is true so <laughs> secret police and angels and ghosts are just All of it's regular part of everyday life and everybody was like yes this is our life and They're we cool go with on it. with it and do we know what state it's in no is it patterned after anything in particular Joseph grew up in, in Southern California and I grew up in, in East Texas. So I, I think it, it takes uh, I think it takes sort of a little inspiration from both ends of the desert. Very, very interesting. Okay, so we're gonna listen to um, a clip and, and you guys are very into Lee Marvin for some reason. I used to work at a at a nonprofit cinema. I love Lee Marvin. You love Lee Marvin. Okay, so this is a, a clip about um, Lee Marvin's birthday. Let's take a listen. Today is a very special day, listeners. Yes, for once your calendars are not deceiving you. Today is the 30th birthday of longtime Nightville resident and Hollywood legend, Lee Marvin. Mr. Marvin is on break from the filming of The Rise of the Hobbits, part four, the anticipated next chapter in Peter Jackson's eight part film series based on the copyright page of The Hobbit. The town has declared the birthday a civic holiday and are holding a fair in honor of Mr. Marvin in Grove Park. The man himself is set to speak later today, but head over now to play fun carnival games and eat local snacks. John Peters, you know, the farmer, will be there selling boiled imaginary corn dipped in theoretical butter, a tasty and extremely healthy snack containing practically no calories at all. More on these birthday celebrations, as there continues to be a birthday to celebrate. Uh, I'm just so excited! I'm sorry, I really get into birthdays. Always have. I just... I wish I could remember when mine is. <laughs> it's so random. <laughs> it's really funny. And somehow when you get to listen to it, but you're not seeing anything, your imagination is so much fun as a part of this show. Yeah, I feel like that's the uh, that's such a core of, of both comedy and horror is letting uh, letting the the listener have to uh, deal with their own imagery, deal right. with whatever's in their own heads to piece it all together. And then when you are creeped out or scared, you're actually kind of doing it to yourself, which yeah. is a, a cool and fun thing. So the live tour, what happens on the live tour? So it's a similar structure to the podcast, but we write the show, the live show tour to be one, uh, easily accessible for anyone. You know, we have 140 episodes of the podcast. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to have to ha listen to all those before <laughs> you see a live show. Um, and 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 two, uh, we write it uh, to involve the audience in a way. I mean, I, I feel like it's a shame to do theater and not acknowledge the fact that we're all in a room together. So and we get to shout things we out? Get, yeah, or how, it's a little bit it more controlled than that. But yeah, yeah we, we definitely try to take the audience energy in every live show that we've toured. We always try and find at least one way to involve the audience. Uh, this show, A Spy in the Desert, uh, we have one that I, I think was maybe our most fun audience involvement to date. I can't specifically say what it is, it's a little spoilery, okay. uh, but it was a lot of fun to sort of do and the, and the people who have participated in, in the previous shows have been wonderful. So you're right that podcasts are not hard to do, they're not expensive, but when you and your buddy do a podcast and then it blows up like this <laughs> one, how, how is that? 
Um, oh yeah, it's a lot of uh, suddenly looking at your own life, being like, well, what are we doing? Well, how do we how do we piece this together? Uh, I was still working a full time job uh, when Nightville was blowing up, and we started booking live tours. Right. Our uh, our very first tour show was at the Neptune in Seattle back in January 2014. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, five years ago. And uh, well, we're I, weird here, so that yeah, works it, well. Seattle's so perfect for yes, Nightville. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I it was uh, the first month having left a job of, of a career of 16 years doing. What were you doing? I was uh, fundraising for nonprofit theaters. Wow. And uh, and it was uh, yeah, it was suddenly I was a tour manager of a, now of a you live can be show. a donor. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And I am now, and it's really exciting. That is cool. And so this is also going to become a television. Show? We have a we have a development deal with uh, with Sony, and uh, they've been really wonderful. They've they, they it, we were very trepidatious about going into television because we don't know how it works, and a lot more people than us have to be involved. Right. Um, and plus, Sony, then it becomes real. And then There's it becomes an real. Yeah. Visual, and you don't have that same opportunity for the the audience to yeah. conjure it in their own mind. That's right. And so we we want some input, but we don't have the ability to say move to Los Angeles and then both of us like learn how to. <laughs> run a TV show, so uh, but Sony Sony really uh, got it and has been really excellent in helping us develop it. Um, unlike putting out a podcast episode, television is a much slower process. Yes, yes, it is. Um, so thank you so much for coming by. This is thank a you. great podcast. If people haven't heard it, they need to tune in. And I kind of look forward to the TV show and seeing how somebody conceives of this. I do too. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> Welcome to Night Vale's World Tour. Lands at the Neptune Theater in Seattle tomorrow night with shows at 7 and 9.30 p.m. Still ahead, Nancy Guppy is back with her suggestions for upcoming exhibits and concerts and more after this quick break.